Um, okay. So, if we have one minus sine squared of x um, divided by cosecant squared of x minus one, there's really not too much I can do with this. I mean, we could kind of work on separating out our uh, fraction in, into this, but really what I, what I automatically see, squares, I automatically want to look at is my Pythagorean identities, all right? So I wrote those two down that are going to deal with sine squared and cosecant squared. Um, to put this as a one minus sine squared, I'm obviously going to have to get this negative sine, okay? So what I'll do is I'll subtract the sine squared of x on both sides. And therefore what I will see is cosine squared of x equals one minus sine squared of x. Make sense? So it's kind of squared. Right so on top, we can rewrite it as cosine squared over cosecant squared minus uh, one, if I subtract the one on both sides, that's going to leave me with cotangent squared of x equals cosecant squared of x minus one. The rest of it. Okay. So now on the bottom, I can write cotangent. Um, now, now what do I do, right? We got this far, now what happens? Well, well yeah, I know I'm the teacher, I need to figure this one out, right? Uh, well, what I would do, looking at this is, I, told, I would think about my own tip that I told you guys. Let's rewrite this as a sine over cosine, see if we can do something with it. So I'll write cosine squared of x all over, remember cotangent is cosine squared of x over sine squared of x. Right? Yes. So, how do we get you know, a fraction off the bottom? We can multiply by the reciprocal, which would be sine squared of x, which is tangent really, over cosine squared of x, right? That equals tangent. But if I multiply that on the bottom and then multiply it on top, what you notice is now that's over a 1. So my cosines will now cancel out, and I'm just left with sine squared of x. Did we see that? Yeah. That looks really scary. <laughs> I know. <laughs>